Good morning, folks. The eclipse season is upon us. Three set to be a sight for Earth in one month span beginning Thursday, when a partial lunar eclipse is going to be seen by just about everyone except North America. With a full moon set center in the midnight sky, Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Southwest Pacific all have visibility. Great article to go with this image if you want to learn about NASA's hyperspectral infrared imaging. Thermal readings indicate chemical composition on the ground, vegetation, perhaps even outgassing, and could be very useful one day on other planets. Switching to the RSOE alert map where 80 miners are pretty much written off under more rock and dirt than could be removed in weeks. Remember when the government of Japan raised the minimum safe level of radiation to 8,000 becquerels? Well, they're finding mud in school swimming pools near Fukushima at 100,000. Unfortunately, the worst news is that while they determined how to carefully dispose of that, a few hundred similar pools were simply flushed into local tributaries, and the hunt for contamination is on. The Nevado del Ruiz volcano is rumbling again. Tremors indicative of rock fracture have locals one step past nervous about another killer eruption there. Oddest tremor of the day was in Hungary. Managed to work through a lot of lack of English to find the Hungarian all-time large quake list. To get one much bigger than that, you need to go way back, hundreds or maybe even thousands of years, but yesterday's quake was the largest in more than two years and one of the largest of the last decades. Southwest Pacific, only real weather warning is more downpours in New Zealand, maybe a chill in Perth. Europe is another story where the central column through the continent has watches, fierce wind north in Norway and south to Germany where rain becomes severe lightning as you go further south to the coastal nations. The U.S. watch zone is thin and tight today, but right now they are set to enjoy a few solid warm hours with winds out of the south. This leading low pressure cell is just like all the others we see now, spins counterclockwise as it knuckles across the country with a convergence tail trailing south of it acting as the negotiator between the air masses. That convergence is where the severe threats are and it will shift east tonight to the areas zoomed in earlier. Shifting to space weather, where we see a distinct drop in cosmic ray density. Was well, the solar wind picked back up? Yes, barely, but yes. We got orange and yellow, the density and speed elevated. Even below in green, you can see about a 3,000 degree increase in the solar wind temperature. We expect a coronal hole stream impact soon. It will actually be from the tiny opening out ahead of these big ones. Got a bit longer to wait for the big boys. You can't tell, but that spike does hit the M line there, a bona fide M flare yesterday from that delta spot that is now turning away from Earth. Perhaps she'll favor us with a parting shot of energy from this trailing interaction that two years ago would have fired X flares by now. Comparatively, the incoming active regions appear small and magnetically benign. Earth footprint jump to the north central Earth facing disk. Our magnetic connectivity on the right suggests half is still on the right edge, while the rest have joined the primary connection. We are into the second half of this earthquake watch. It will taper off after the eclipse and coronal hole streams fade. FYI, the next geocentricity after these is the solar Saturn opposition. It's a big one. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.